Daniel Radcliffe makes yet another bold choice post-Potter. You're watching Beyond the Trailer's review of Kill Your Darlings. What the hell is this? You don't know, Lou. As soon as you think you do, he'll find someone else. Jack! Maybe he already has. What happened? Oh, you don't know? He wants my help, and I don't know if I should give it to him. He calls you his guardian angel. That's what he called David. Like James Franco, Daniel Radcliffe has long been dogged by rumors that he is gay. Now, one of the reasons that Franco has trouble escaping these rumors is that he continues to star in and produce films that focus on homosexuality. In fact, back in 2010, Franco portrayed Allen Ginsberg, just as Radcliffe is portraying the openly gay poet here in Kill Your Darlings. Franco's film, Howl, focused on Ginsberg's sexually graphic poem of the same name, which was the subject of an obscenity trial back in 1957, when even the discussion of homosexual acts was considered illegal. Kill Your Darlings focuses on a much different yet equally tumultuous period in Ginsberg's life, when the murder of David Kramer by Lucien Carr rocked the tight-knit beat generation of the 1940s. Ginsburg, Jack Kerouac, and William S. Burroughs were drawn into the sordid drama, and first-time director John Krokedis has assembled a cast of actors to play these literary giants that is equally as impressive. Ben Foster plays Burroughs, Boardwalk Empire's Jack Houston plays Kerouac, Elizabeth Olsen plays Kerouac's wife Edie Parker, and Dexter's Michael C. Hall plays murder victim Kramerer. As for Lucian, he's played by Dane DeHaan, who's quickly becoming one of Hollywood's go-to villains after his impressive debut in Chronicle, and is next set to play Harry Osborn in The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Now, focusing on gay characters has been quite the craze lately. Modern family stars Jesse Tyler Ferguson and Eric Stone Street even good-naturedly poked fun at it when they hosted the Writers Guild Awards in 2011 with the opening number, Write It Gay. So is Kill Your Darlings just riding that wave, or quality filmmaking a la Steven Soderbergh's Behind the Candelabra? I have to admit, I'm not a big fan of the Beat Generation's work. Uh, I find it a little self-indulgent, and I found this movie a little self-indulgent. Uh, that said, Daniel Radcliffe is very good in it, and it's fascinating to watch him come into his own as an actor. I mean, he's definitely making some very bold choices here. Uh, he's really rallying against his Harry Potter uh, image, and I, I, think, I think he will break free of it, if not already. Uh, so I, I understand what he's doing as an artist, and I think to some degree he's succeeding. I'm curious how his fans will take this movie, though, because um, there are serious sexual undertones throughout the film, and there is one very graphic uh, gay uh, sex scene in it. Uh, and, and Radcliffe handles them both, all, all elements, very seriously uh, and well. Uh, but, you know, with James Franco, his indie work where he covers, um, you know, plays homosexual characters and covers those, that, that subject matter, largely goes unnoticed by the mainstream because Franco is making big mainstream movies like This is the End uh, and uh, Oz the Great and Powerful, so his, fa his mainstream fans can just go and see him there, and they largely ignore his, his smaller work. But Radcliffe isn't really making big movies. He's only making these small movies. So his fan base is going to search them out. And I'm sure Radcliffe is hoping he's going to uh, broaden their horizons because of that. And that, I think that's a very noble endeavor. Uh, but just the question is, um, will his fans who like seeing him in a big budget mainstream picture like the Potter franchise uh, like seeing him and want to go in this direction with him, uh, playing a role like Allen Ginsberg? Uh, Dane DeHaan is also very, very good in the movie. It's really, he and, he and Radcliffe make a very photogenic couple. Uh, you know, their director really, uh, really was in love with their romance here, John Krokedis, obviously, and I think that he portrayed that very well. Uh, so the movie's so much about them that the other actors in it really just kind of come in and out. Uh, they never really get to make much of an impression. So if you're a fan of anybody else here, like for instance, Ben Foster or Jack Houston, uh, or even Elizabeth Olsen, just realize that they have fleeting moments at best. This is really a Dane DeHaan, Daniel Radcliffe movie. Uh, and the movie itself, I feel it just tried to cover too much. Uh, I thought, it, to me, it got the most interesting at the end when it started to focus and really hone in on, uh, you know, the, the problems and the, the two-sidedness of trying to be, you know, being gay in that time period. Uh, and the, even more so at the end, they kind of had, you know, when a, a true story, they tell a true story and it ends and they tell you like little blurbs about what happened. Well, I found what happened later on to be the most interesting aspects of the story rather than its genesis. Uh, but so the, because this movie tries to cover a murder story, um, you know, the begin how the, the genesis of the beat, uh, beat generation, how it was born, and also, as I said, the politics of being gay um, in this time period, you know, right after around World War II. So 
it's too much. And the movie's only about 90 minutes. And they, I think that maybe in the hands of another filmmaker, it would have worked. But here it's just too ambitious and ends up, you know, really not connecting, I think, at any level. And I think it would have been better off focusing on just one of those topics. Uh, so in the end, I would say Kill Your Darlings, uh, you know, it's really only for fans of the Beat Generation and fans of Daniel Radcliffe. Uh, otherwise, I think I think it's not going to be, it's not, I don't, if you're really curious, maybe rent it, but I think it's going to be a tough movie-going experience. Uh, it just doesn't capture my imagination. But as I said, not a fan of the Beat Generation. So if you're a fan of the Beat Generation, or just a huge Daniel Radcliffe fan, and you've seen the uh, Kill Your Darlings, uh, I hope you'll share your own thoughts down below and what you think of the film. So that's my review. Thanks for watching, and I hope you'll check out these other episodes right now.